I think I'm wearing the same shirt I was wearing in the last video. Hey, I'm JP. I've spent the last seven years trying to, trying to understand how visual language could help me tell better stories. This whole thing started when I was photographing a group of Mexica dancers way back in 2017. The Mexica enjoy lives rich in mythology and tradition in folklore. They have this beautiful and strong connection to their past, to ancient stories passed through the generations. And I found all of this fascinating and I really wanted to discover a way to bring the stories and the images we were creating together. So fast forward seven years and this interest in storytelling has turned into a full-blown obsession. But there's a good reason for that. I think it's made me a much better photographer. And I think I can sum up this change in just two words. Be coherent. You see, a photo can be much more than just aesthetically pleasing. You can also compose the elements in your photo to communicate meaning, to transfer meaning. This is visual language and I look at it in more detail in other videos. I'll post a link up here. When I first started playing with visual language, you know, I wasn't very good. And that's because, as it turns out, my visual communication style was all over the place. It only got better when it became more coherent, more consistent, more logical. Think of a great communicator, say Winston Churchill or Steve Jobs. Whoever popped into your head, they didn't get that good by making stuff up on the fly. They would carefully compose their speeches. And visual communication is no different. Every element in your composition should fit together logically, coherently. A visually coherent image stands a much better chance of luring a viewer into what I think of as a narrative frame of mind, a state that happens when a viewer no longer sees a model in your photo, but instead a character in a scene. If you get someone to that point, then they're way more likely to engage with your photo. I took this photo of Linda about seven years ago now. It's actually one of the first Mexica photos we made together. And at the time I was really happy with it. I liked the geometry in the pose and the leading lines on the tree. Looking at it now, I see a giant issue with the visual language. The image was taken at sunset, but my lights are set to 5000K. And that's the color temperature for the midday sun, not for the setting sun. That's a problem. The lighting is incoherent with the rest of the scene. It's just not logical. Photos like this don't make good narrative photos because you see a model posing, not a character. Look, here's a more recent image where I made sure to match the color temperatures. And that's why it's immersive. It's a much more believable narrative photo. But this isn't just about lighting, it's actually about every aspect of your composition because they all need to work together to create a narrative image. My intention with this photo was for Linda to radiate confidence and power, but I messed it up because I actually shot her from this high angle and the psychology of perspective tells us that when you literally look down on someone, you also figuratively do that. You feel superior to them. Someone you're looking down on is not someone radiating confidence or power. It doesn't matter how you set up your lights or your pose. It just won't work. The perspective isn't going to be coherent with the other elements of the composition. And you can see that because a few months later, I had the chance to reshoot this. Notice how your perception of Linda shifts 
as I change to that lower perspective. And that's because the visual language is suddenly way more coherent. The confident pose is paired with a complementary perspective. So while these might sound like totally different issues, color temperature and perspective, both images were improved by thinking about coherent visual language. I'm not saying every photo needs to tell a story. Composition can be purely aesthetic. Most of the time, that's all I'm trying to do, to arrange elements into a visually pleasing composition and not much else. But sometimes I want to add another layer to create compositions that have aesthetic value and narrative values, photos that look pretty, but also transfer meaning. Take this photo, we actually shot it quite recently, just a few weeks ago. Every 52 years, the yearly calendar and the shorter ritual calendar end on the exact same day. And on that day, the story goes, the Aztec god of fire, Chutlicutli, binds these two calendars together to create a new sun. It's a great story and this photo is an attempt at communicating those ideas visually. The two torches are arcing together to symbolize this binding of the calendars and the semicircle created by that is the shape of a rising sun or a new sun. That's a narrative side of the composition but there's also an aesthetic side here. That semicircle is also a strong geometric shape. Hidden geometry is a well-established compositional technique. I do believe that if you work on creating these cohesive compositions, you're taking a first solid step towards better narrative photography, to having people see characters in your photos rather than just people posing.